Hi, I'm John, and I'm a level one chef. I'm Gabrielle, and I'm a level two chef. I'm Frank, and I've been a chef for 23 years. This is actually my mother's recipe, and she always made it for us in the winter when either we were sick or it was cold. I love to eat this in the winter. This is my go-to for pleasing other people and making a nice hearty stock. My recipe for chicken soups is slightly different than most people's chicken soup. It's kind of a, a mix of my grandmother's and my own recipe. Let's start with the chicken. I like to use whole chicken breasts with the bone in to flavor my chicken soup. I find that the flavor adds another texture, another richness to the soup that you don't get if you're just using the chicken without the bone. I prefer in my chicken soup to use strictly the legs and that's just because that's the way my dad has always done it. For my recipe, I like to use whole chickens. You get not only the bones to make the broth or the stock, but you also get the meat for the soup. So the first thing I do is take off the wings and then we're gonna take off the breasts and the thighs. I cut on both sides of the breastbone and then I'm just gonna take the meat away from the bone. Okay, so I take off the breasts, I'm gonna put them over here, cut the thigh and the leg apart. There's some connective tissue in there that actually adds some gelatin to the soup. That's gonna give it that nice kind of rich, almost like a little bit of stickiness. I like to use chicken breasts because it has a lot of that great white meat. You could swap it out for drumsticks or thigh meat, but I really like how the breast has a lot of white meat. You're more than welcome to make chicken soup with any other part, but I really like the dark meat. I think it gives it a nice hearty flavor and adds some extra fattiness to it. To get ready to make my stock for my soup, I'm gonna roast these chicken bones. It's gonna draw out some of the fat, it's gonna concentrate some of the flavor in the chicken, and it's gonna turn nice and golden brown. I'm gonna roast these bones for stock. And I actually keep the skin on the chicken as it cooks in the soup, and I feel like it flavors it as well, adds a little fat, but then I'll go ahead and remove the skin before I'm ready to serve the dish. Okay, so my bones are roasted. They have a really nice brown color to them. I have them just so that the juices have reduced a little and stuck to the bottom of the pan. This is called a fond, F-O-N-D, um, and it's kind of the foundation for a lot of good sauces and stocks. So in order to get some of this nice, these nice brown bits of this fond off of the bottom of the pan, I'm gonna put a little water on it and put it aside and let it sit. Okay, so now I'm going to make my base. Broths are super easy because you just kind of put everything in all at once. So I'm using a standard mirepoix. Fancy word for celery, carrots, and onions. I'm gonna take a little bit of that chicken fat that I saved from my last batch and put it into my pot. I add my onions in. I'm gonna bash a little garlic up. This goes into the pot as well. My celery. In go my carrots. And we're gonna let that just lightly brown a little. So once my vegetables start to get a little color to them, we're gonna add some tomato paste. Um, and we're gonna do something that the French call pinsage. And that just means basically lightly browning your tomato paste. And then I'm going to go ahead and put in my chicken. I'm gonna add all the bones and all of the juice to this. All into the pot. And then we're gonna add our water. We're gonna add enough water just to cover our bones. At this point, I'm gonna let it come to a simmer and then I'm gonna add all of my flavorings. So my salt and my peppercorns. peppercorns. I'm gonna put a bay leaf in, parsley. Just gonna tear it up. We have a little bit of time. I'm not too worried about putting these in whole because I'm gonna strain this out later. So I'm gonna actually let this boil and then once it reaches a boil, I'm gonna turn it down to low and let it simmer for 45 minutes to an hour. So my stock has been simmering for about an hour, hour and 15 minutes, and it's reduced a little. You can see that my bones and my chicken is, is cooked. If we've done our job right, all the vegetables in the chicken will have given up their flavor to the stock. So we're gonna strain it. Taking out all the chickens, I'm gonna go ahead and shred it. Shred. So this is the messy part, obviously. You do want to be careful to not get any of the tendons. I'm just going to try and be pretty thorough that none of that's coming through. So now that I have my stock, we're going to assemble the soup. So I have an array of vegetables and herbs here that all go into the soup. Carrots, celery, onion, turnip, parsnip, and then I do a mix of dill and fresh parsley. Super simple, really tasty. You can actually find all of these ingredients usually packaged together in the vegetable aisle of your supermarket, labeled under soup kit. I have a little bit of butcher twine, it's just cotton butcher twine. And these are kind of the same herbs I put in my stock. This is just gonna reinforce that flavor. So I take the parsley, I take the thyme, and I'm just gonna tie those up. Uh, it's gonna be easy to fish out uh, when I wanna take it out. So first up, our chicken breast. Just so you don't have to touch them, got a handy dandy fork here, really simple. Throw that right in the pot. I always like to start a little bit with onions. I like them to be slightly more done than the rest. Onions, always onions. I'm gonna add my carrots, my some garlic. garlic, my celery. 
Then our veggies, carrots, celery, onions, turnip, and parsnip. Saffron, it really makes a difference, adds a beautiful flavor to it and some fun color, so. I'm gonna add some tomato product. Tomato product just being some pureed tomatoes. And this is, again, just gonna add a little more body to my soup. It's gonna add a little more richness. Tomatoes also add a little bit of acid. Then I have my thyme. And last but not least, uh, to really bring home the Mediterranean flavors I'm trying to work with today, I'm gonna go ahead and put in the rosemary. A little bit more salt, some little fresh cracked black pepper. I'm gonna add my bouquet garni. And then I'm gonna add my stock. And then last but not least, we have our herbs. I like to use a nice bunch of dill and a nice bunch of fresh parsley and water. So enough water to fully cover all the vegetables, all the herbs, the chicken, and last but not least, some salt. And you can see that I'm not putting a ton of salt in it every time. I'm just hitting it a little here and there. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that my broth is coming back up to a boil, and then I'm going to add in the white wine, the veggies that I prepped, and then the chicken that I shredded. I prefer a dry white wine. I think that that works really nicely with kind of the heartiness of this soup. The saffron just adds just this fun little element of like, what is that? Who is she? She's saffron. Gonna let this come to a simmer, and then we're gonna add our chicken. This is the chicken that we butchered earlier. We've roasted it in the oven. Didn't cook it all the way. We cooked it about three quarters of the way. We're gonna add a little water. All I really wanna do is release that fond of those brown bits on the bottom of this pan. So while the water sits, I'm gonna drop my chicken into the soup. So I'm taking all these little brown bits off the bottom of my pan, and these are gonna end up in the soup. Get it all in there. So now my soup is really going. It's been simmering for about an hour, hour and a half, and I've went ahead and removed the herbs. So we're gonna go ahead and find our chicken breast, gonna remove the skin, and then take off all the bones, because I only want that really juicy white meat. I like this to be chunky because I find that it adds a nice texture and bite to when you go in and get that nice big uh, spoonful of chicken soup. Add it right back into that soup. Now I'm gonna add in some orzo. Orzo's in the pasta, it's boiling. Gonna do that for 10 minutes until it's al dente. You're gonna get a little bit in every bite, but it's not gonna be the main focus. I like to use these medium pasta shells, and I like them cooked in the broth so that over about 10, 15 minutes, they really get nice and soft. So while the soup is cooking, I'm gonna make my dumplings and I'm gonna add into the soup. It's a very simple recipe. Crack an egg into the bowl, a little bit of that chicken fat, delicious. It's gonna bolster up that chicken flavor. We're gonna add some flour and a little bit of black pepper, fresh cracked if possible. And we're just gonna mix it up. This is the consistency I'm looking for. It's little sticky, fairly firm, and it holds up by itself. Now that I have my dumpling batter ready, I'm gonna remove the chicken. Just comes right out of the pot. I'm also gonna take out my uh, bouquet garni because that does not taste good. Nobody wants to eat string in their soup. So we're gonna leave this on, on fairly low heat, and then we're gonna add our dumplings. Just take spoonfuls, just plop them in. And once they start to float, we'll give them another couple of minutes so that they have time to cook. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add in the secret ingredient, the lemon juice. It's gonna make it taste really zesty and lemony and Greek. It's been about 15 minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and try my pasta. Mmm, perfect. It's infused with the flavors of the broth, just how I like it. My dumplings are floating to the top, so I know they're ready. And now we're gonna move on to the final step, adding the chicken. So we take it, just gets put in their soup, and once it comes back up to a simmer, we're ready to go. So now that my soup is fully cooked, let's serve up a bowl. I'm gonna just ladle a big scoop out. It's a really chunky soup, which I love. I'm gonna get a nice helping of that chicken, and the chicken's gonna make that base for us. And then we're gonna take a couple of those nice dumplings and plop them on top. I try to get a mix of the veggies, the meat, and the noodles. For my toppings, I'm gonna add a little bit of chives, parsley, and tarragon. Just some soft herbs to give it a little bit of freshness. I like to do a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, some grated cheese, pecorino romano, or parmigiano reggiano, whatever you have. And then of course, because it's chicken soup, you need to have some crushed up saltines. I'm going to top this with some lemon zest and parsley. The lemon zest is just gonna add a little extra zing to the flavor. It's gonna really bring home that lemon juice that we added into the broth. And there's my chicken soup. Hot! <laughs> Let's not use that please for the final cut. And this is my chicken soup. And this is my chicken soup. And this is my chicken soup.
All right, here we go. Okay. That came out nice, really nice. Mm. I'm happy with that. Mm. Oh, it's so good. Tastes just like mom's. The lemon and the white wine and the broth, so good. It's not necessarily what you would have like with your grandmother cooking. It's a little nicer than that, but it's still kind of soul satisfying. I don't think I would change anything to be honest. I mean, the way that I do it, uh, it's pretty simple and I'm really happy with how it turned out. We saw three different chefs make three different chicken soups. John used chicken breast, Gabrielle used drumsticks, and Frank used a whole chicken. While pretty much any part of a chicken can be used to make chicken soup, whole chicken or darker cuts of meat like the thighs or drumsticks work best. White meat, as found in chicken breast, is mild in taste and benefits when additional meaty flavor components are added to the soup. Dark meat is more game-like in flavor and has higher iron, calories, and fat when compared to white meat. Because many flavor compounds are fat-soluble, Dark meat tends to be juicier due to its increased fat content. Using a combination of the dark meat and the white meat can heighten the taste of your finished product. John and Gabrielle made a broth while Frank made a stock. A broth is water simmered with vegetables, aromatics and meat, and can include some bones. I find that the bone gives it just a little extra hearty flavor. A stock replaces the meat with bones and is usually simmered for a longer period of time than a broth. They extract collagen from the connective tissue and bones and act as a thickening agent. For his base, Frank roasted a deboned chicken carcass and Mayad Browning contributed umami characteristics to the taste of the meat. Tomato paste was also included in Frank's base Tomatoes give my soup a little more body and weight. The sugars in the tomatoes caramelize, creating a rich earthy flavor that won't be found in John or Gabrielle's bases. All three chefs cook their soup on a stovetop. Its radiant and conductive heat extracts all the flavors from the ingredients, which in turn marry together to create a flavorful fortified broth. John added turnips for an earthy sweet flavor and parsnips for some nuttiness. You'd be remiss if you didn't add it. Gabrielle's soup had saffron and white wine. It smells delish. Saffron provides a musky, floral, honey-like flavor. The white wine added acidity, lightness, and complexity to her soup, enhancing the overall flavor profile. Frank added chicken fat, bay leaves, and crushed tomato to his soup. The crushed tomatoes add acidity, bulk, and color. John used pasta shells in his soup. Gabrielle used orzo, and Frank made dumplings. Statues like these Bulk up soups are great at sopping up flavor and break the monotony of the chicken. The amount of liquid a starch is able to absorb and how concentrated the starch grains are in the liquid affect the thickness of the final dish. John topped his soup with grated cheese and crushed crackers. The cheese added umami and savoriness, offering complexity while enhancing the taste of the other ingredients. Gabrielle used lemon juice, the secret ingredient, lemon zest, and parsley to finish her soup. Lemon brightened the soup and its acidity added a refreshing aftertaste. Parsley is not assertive, but it gives the soup a light, fresh taste and look. Frank also topped his soup with tender herbs. In addition to parsley, he added tarragon, which has an anise-like taste, and chives, which have a mild onion flavor. Whether you're battling the common cold or just looking to make a savory meal, Hopefully, these tips can help you out the next time you're making your own chicken soup.